One of the happiest moments ever is when you find the courage to let go of what you can't change. Happiness, created by Daisy Haggage. What is happiness? David and Goliath is a concept we all know. An arrogant big dude who thinks he's fighting a sword fight and David changed. Hmm, what is happiness? <laughs> um. I think happiness is a pretty complicated concept that that has to do with just sort of pleasure on one hand, but has to do with broader meaning also. We know that there's a whole spectrum of a positive state that one wants to attain, that is much more nuanced than the word happiness can imply. It seems to me that happiness is some blend of experience of pleasure um, and the experience of meaning and fulfillment in life, and I think much more of the latter than the former. For me, staying in my own lane, not being comparative to others, my peers, that could have more than me or less than me, that is when I'm the most happy, when I'm in my own lane. So happiness is something more we can sensibly ask you if you're happy with your day or happy with your life. Pleasure is short. You say, you know, pleasure is an experience that lasts 10 seconds, 20 seconds, you know, a sip of wine, being hearing a joke, being hugged. Watching a child laugh. If you want to define happiness in any any big picture way, you really want to be focusing more on what gives life meaning and purpose than you do uh, on the moment to moment little jolts of joy that you might get. Happiness to me before I uh, was diagnosed with cancer a few years ago meant something very different to me. Happiness back then was about achieving these big milestones, graduating from college. Um, getting the right kind of job. Um, now happiness to me is about the mundane, everyday little things in my life. And we know a lot about the things that are associated with life set, high life satisfaction. By far the most important is your relationship with other people. There's kind of fleeting happiness, the kinds of little buzzes you get from eating an awesome ice cream sundae, but to me the real happiness um, what I would call joy is kind of that deep connection you get with somebody else. My son racing up to me and just throwing his arms around his, my neck and his legs around my middle and he's the koala bear and I'm the tree. That's happiness. That's happy. So happiness has a different definition to different people. The dictionary definition of happiness is a state of well-being in a contentment or joy. The word happy dates back to our earliest memories. It is written in cake frostings, shouted at midnight on New Year's Eve, and invoked during wedding receptions. But what is the best route of happiness? Is pleasure what makes life good? Or is good life based on the observance of principles obeyed when to do so means a loss of pleasure? Are we happy when we praise by others? Or when someone we envy suddenly falls on hard times? Do we need pleasures to be happy? There are three assumptions that I will explain that might help answer some of these questions. Stoicism. The Stoicism assumption. The Stoicism was born over 2,000 years ago. It is the product of Greek intellect it lays heavy stress on human reasons and the belief that human mankind is superior form of animal life. So as some believe that happiness consists of coping rationality with source of unhappiness. For example, when you come to the end of the rope of your rope, tie a knot and hang on. Which means that each of us can control our response to external events despite the disaster that may occur. Stoic belief that it is reasonable to know that disasters, such as natural, social, personal, happens. Central Stoicism is the belief that true happiness is not a matter of circumstances or good fortune or what happens to us, but 
rather a matter of how we respond to what happens to us. Responding positively to suffering. To find the roots of unhappiness, we must look inward. Nothing is under our control except the way we think about things. Natural disasters, social upheavals, wars, revolutions, outbreaks of disease, rising crime rates all happen as a result of either accidental or high complicated causes. Our happiness should not depend on their, on their not taking place, but we cannot alter external circumstances, but we can decide how we feel about them. One of the best known Stoic teachers was a Greek named Epictetus. Epictetus' story was that he was captured and enslaved by the Romans. Epictetus was tortured in his captivity. On one occasion, his leg was broken by his master. Epictetus was faced with the choice of surrendering to despair or finding some means of enduring. He later recognized that nothing, not even torture, was unbearable unless one wished to find it so. After being free, he spent his life spreading the Stoic belief. So Stoicism is to recognize what you can and cannot control. You determine your reaction to crisis, to a crisis. Ignore people dominated by their own negative emotions. Master yourself in name to be virtuous and learn to move on. Epicurus. Epicurus was a Greek philosopher. He was the creator of Epicurism. And his main question was, what makes people happy? Epicurus based on the teaching um, belief that happiness is freedom from pain. So here's a little video that might help the, epi the Epicureanism assumption.
Epicurus' assumption was happiness is avoiding pain. Epicurus was particularly critical of those who recommended pleasure in excess. Epicurus knew that would always be followed by both physical and moral pain. There is a character in the Ernest Hemingway story in another country that says, He cannot marry, he cannot marry, he said angrily. If he says to lose everything, he should not place himself in a position to lose that. He should not place himself in a position to lose. He should not, he shouldn't, no, he should fight things that he cannot lose. The major assumption of Epicurism is that nothing lasts forever. No one can sustain pleasure over a prolonged period of time. Therefore, this cannot be a complete definition of happiness. Unable to satisfy our pleasure, we seek material possession or fame, both of which symbolizes happiness without bringing happiness. Epicurism looks the epicurean physical look of a epicurean person is they are typically lean and thin, exercise their bodies to keep in the best possible shape, mentally and in in agile, good workers. Buddhists. Um, Buddhist um, Hinayana is one of the two major schools of Buddhism, from the Sankhya's meaning little fairy book. The narrow path of personal happiness attained by serenity through meditation. It developed for purpose was to formulate the teaching of Sid Bharatha into the systematic practice of four noble truths. One, life is filled with pain. Two, the cause of pain is frustrated desire. Three, there is a way out of pain. And four, the way out of the way out is the eightfold path. The last one has to do with how we think, speak, behave towards others, and above all, how we find peace through meditation. With the Hinayana, Buddhism involves moral conduct, which is automatic if we follow all the recommended steps. It is practice was too narrow, too limited. It, has, it was wonderful means of self-help, of lifting the spirit of the depressed, but not a way to help others who may have lost their way. So this is why they created a school known as the Mahayana. Mahayana is one of the two major schools of Buddhism, from the Sankris meaning big fairy book. It's the wider path of happiness attained by helping self and others find the way. Um, happiness is something that we all as humans search for. Uh, personally, um, the, by reading this, my way, um, the way that I deal or the way that I find happiness is the stoicism belief. I uh, believe that it consists of coping rational with source of unhappiness. So I tend to um, make a rope, at the end, make, make a knot at the end of the rope and hang on. Lastly, I'm going to leave you with this quote with, from John Lennon. When I was five years old, my mother always told me that happiness was the key to life. When I went to school, they asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. I wrote down happy. They told me I didn't understand the assignment, and I told them they didn't understand life. John Lennon. Thank you very much.